The Department of Psychiatry at Massachusetts General Hospital was actually founded in 1934 thanks to a gift from the Rockefeller Foundation with the intention of moving psychiatric care away from asylum to general hospitals. It established its strong base as a place where psychiatrists work closely with internists and surgeons in the care of patients in the general hospital setting. Over time, as the world of psychiatry changed, as we began to incorporate psychopharmacology and studies of the brain, we grew very dramatically from a small hospital-based department into a very large general hospital department. The world has given us some extraordinary new tools with which to interact with the brain, to understand the brain, to actually see into it in a way that we've never been able to. And one very innovative program is one that's being done to study and develop new therapies for craving and addiction. The Center for Addiction Medicine at Mass General Hospital is a professional home for faculty and staff who teach the neurobiology and treatment of addiction to medical students, residents, fellows, as well as practicing physicians. We also provide clinical care for adults and adolescents with addictions, and we do research mainly to identify new treatments, uh, but also our research focuses on understanding the underlying neurobiology of addiction so that the next generation of treatments can rationally address the problem in the brain. We're working with an extraordinary group of collaborators at the Massachusetts in Institute of Technology who have developed software to allow us in real time to see how the brain is functioning. It typically takes days to capture brain activity using standard fMRI due to the complexity of the data. With our collaborators at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, we now have the capability of capturing a brain activity signal every few seconds. Being able to see your brain working while you're having a symptom like craving provides a breakthrough ability to learn what may increase craving and what techniques may reduce craving at the level of the brain. One of the major problems in psychiatry has been that it's very hard for us to access the tissue that we're most interested in, which is the brain. While it's possible to do post-mortem studies, in general it's been very hard to study brain cells from patients with these illnesses. What we've been focused on is taking samples from patients, usually skin samples, which we can then turn into stem cells and then differentiate into cells that will ultimately become brain cells. And this really just explodes the kinds of experiments that we can do. We think that being able to build these kinds of models will make it much more straightforward for us to screen for new drugs and also to understand the mechanism of action of existing drugs. This approach could be really important in allowing us to find truly new treatments for psychiatric illness, not just making the same antidepressants or the same antipsychotics over and over again. Amazingly, prior to 2008, we really didn't have any specific genetic risk factors that we could say with certainty contributed to common psychiatric disorders. Since then, there has been just a dramatic acceleration of findings about the genome in general but in particular, we've learned about specific genetic variations that seem to confer risk for a fairly broad range of psychiatric disorders. We've been able to put together a repository of more than 120,000 DNA samples spanning a very broad range of psychiatric conditions. What we were able to do was actually look across five very different psychiatric disorders, autism, ADHD, depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia and ask whether we could find any specific genetic variants that were associated with not just one of those disorders, but with all five. What we found remarkably was that there did seem to be specific regions of the genome that were associated with all of these disorders. It suggests that there's some shared biology among these very different clinical syndromes. The results seem to point to calcium channel genes as being important across these five disorders. That raises the possibility that treatments targeting those channels might actually have broad effects. The hope is that this kind of genetic research is going to tell us something fundamentally new about why these disorders occur, how can we target them in much more specific and, and hopefully effective ways. What we're learning as we explore the biology of psychiatric disorders is that these are not just disorders of 
nature. They're disorders of nurture as well. But the mind, in fact, can change the brain just as the brain gives rise to the mind. So our research is guiding us to new targets for, for therapeutics and new understanding about how these targets interact with experience. And together we hope that we can put together new therapeutic programs that will make a difference for people.